Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the PGA Championship for this weekend. Uh, just a heads up, um, Bobby, Kenny, and actually Jordan from Saberson are going to be doing their own breakdown. Uh, I guess using Saberson as a main, as a source for building lineups, and they're going to be doing this tomorrow. And I'm not going to be available for that, so I'm going to be giving you my own uh, my own my own breakdown and takes uh, today. And give you a couple of thoughts on tournaments like this as well to kind of start off because this being a major, there's a couple of things that are that are true. Number one is that pricing is usually pretty soft. Um, they, they try to make these events such that anybody can play whoever they want, and you have a incredible amount of players that everybody has heard of that are all playing this event. And they want to make it so everybody can get lineups they like. And as a result, pricing is kind of designed that way. Um, so what ends up happening is that ownership does tend to be spread around a decent amount because you don't really have to struggle to make the lineups that you want. Or more to the point, you know, you don't have to struggle to make lineups that that look good. You know, you, you do have the best, the best golfers here and Quite honestly, the difference between one and, you know, one, what's the real difference between, say, uh, Xander Schauffele and, and Hideki Matsuyama? I mean, nothing, right? And, and, and to have one guy be that much higher owned than another when you could get them both in is just kind of rare, right? So, so that's the first thing. But the second thing is that because it's also the PGA Championship, Pricing usually also comes out early. And what that means is that the industry really just analyzes, overanalyzes, and continues to analyze. And for some reason, even though all these guys are pretty much equal plays, the, the ownership does tend to start to, to, I don't want to say coagulate, <laughs> that's not the right word, just tends to, to, to collect on a couple of guys in a couple of spots. Um, just because, you know, one, one, one side says it's good and another one kind of follows it and people say, oh, boy, maybe I should, I should up my ownership there or whatever. And so even though, you know, quite honestly, a lot of these guys are really almost equal plays, you're going to get ownership on one over the other for really no reason. Um, so what I would recommend is more than almost any other event. I would really be a stickler for ownership. And that's going to actually become, that's kind of contrary to what you might hear across the industry. You might hear, well, ownership really doesn't matter. Don't worry about ownership. It's going to be spread out. But I, I think the opposite. I, I, I would try to, to be as much of a stickler for ownership as possible, even if it's between a 9% guy and a 5% guy. Now, you, you might ask, how, how do you really know what the ownership is going to be? I mean, you don't. But I think using you know, a good ownership projection source is going to help you. Um, and, and I would wait until as late as possible for ownership to update. And, and so I'm going to do that for my, uh, for my true DFS projections, which I, as you, you, you know, basically aggregates all the projections in the industry, right. Um, to some degree. And I'm going to, I'm going to put those out, update those later Wednesday. Uh, that's as late as I'm going to be able to do it. Um, and it doesn't really change that much after that anyway. Because at that point, people are just starting to build lineups and no, nobody's really, I mean, ownerships are really never getting updated after that. Um, so with that said, I mean, I want to go through these tiers and go through who I like. And what I would like to focus on is, is who's close. You know, I, I have ownership projections as of now, which are, which are, which are decent. Um, and it'll give us an idea of where I think people are going to be owned, but we got to just continue to, 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 to monitor this. Cause right now, right, to give you an example, I don't have a single golfer at 20% or higher. Um, and that's, and it's just going to happen. You know, someone's going to be the, the industry is going to just fall on somebody and we'll be able to figure that out by Wednesday night. Um, I should stop to, to say that the, the ownership projections 
in golf compared to all sports are the tightest. In other words, they are the most, uh, the deviation between actual projections and resulting actual ownership based on my work is, is the closest in golf to any sport there is. Um, so if you're going to approach a slate with the, an eye towards ownership, uh, this is the, this is the, and this is the sport that, that allows you to do that most efficiently. I think that, uh, this is a good tournament to, to, to leverage that. So I'm going to go through these tiers. I'm going to say who I like, but, um, I also am going to mention how, how owned I think these are going to be or how close these guys are going to be to one another as far as plays go. Um, so first of all, with uh, respect to the 10K at up range, which is, you know, these five golfers, three of them kind of make it into my, you know, guys that I'm, I'm in my top 20 or top 25 overall values, which is really why I, where I kind of look to focus my analysis. And, and the top guy for me is Rory McElroy at 10K. Um, and to be honest, I mean, he's, to me, he rates significantly higher than the next two. Um, it's surprising to me. I, I usually don't get too much love for, for Rory and the models that I track, but in this particular tournament, this is, this is what I'm seeing and this is what I'm getting. Um, the other two that are making it for me are, are Justin Thomas and, um, and uh, John Rahm. The, these guys are, are definitely, definitely below Rory in my look, but certainly, you know, in, in the playable range. And unfortunately, or well, fortunately, whatever you want to say, I, I don't have Scheffler or Morikawa um, particularly playable uh, on this slate. Um, I, 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 ha I have those other three 10K guys and up significantly higher than those two this week. Uh, what can I say? Now, not only the ownership that I see of these three guys right now, um, let's, let's look at Rory, JT, and Rob. I have Rory right now at 14, JT at 15, and Rob at 12. Um, and just so you know, I have Scheffler down at 11 and Morikawa down at 10, whatever. Um, so we're going to keep an eye on that, but I would consider Rory to be a very, very strong play. Um, his ownership is not significantly higher than those other guys, not significantly higher than anybody else in the field, really. And I have him as an extremely strong play. So I, I, I would start with that, is that in this top range, I do like Rory the best. Um, okay. Moving down to the 9K range. So in, in the 9K and up range, um, I currently have Patrick Cantlay as the number one overall play on the board. Um, and his, he's getting actually owned in, 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 in uh, similar fashion. I have him one of the top owned guys as well. I mean, you put a guy like this at 9,100, that's what you're going to get sometimes. But the thing is, is that he does rate, at least for me, to be significantly higher than these other guys at 9K. So even though he's getting ownership, I, because of the edge that I see of him over the others, I'm, I'm inclined to eat that ownership. Um, the next guy I have in the 9K range is going to be Xander. Um, and... He, I have him owned similarly to, to Patrick Cantlay. The only thing I would say is that, that, is that Xander does tend to be owned a little more than, than you project sometimes. Um, but then again, you know what he did? He gave everybody quite a scare this past week when he almost didn't make the cut. So maybe those that ownership will be tempered a little bit. But he's the next guy I have. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a drop for me to the next 9K guy that I like, and that would be Cam Smith. Um, I have him in about 13% ownership. And so I, I figure that he is actually being owned now sort of efficiently 
You know what I mean? He's a little worse than Xander and he's uh, owned a little less, whatever. So I think there's no edge in picking one of those or the other. And then we go down. The next one I have on my list is Jordan Speed, but he's he's only like 15th best value for me and he's getting owned quite a bit. Um, I want to compare him to the, the, the next two I have. So I have Speed. Just Dustin Johnson and Hideki as about equal. Yet I have Dustin Johnson as significantly lower owned than Jordan Speed. I have just Dustin Johnson at 10%, where Jordan Speed is 17. And I have them rated exactly the same. So, so in, in my world, I couldn't think of a reason to play Jordan Speed. And, and that's the way I'm going to approach this, this, this tournament. I'm curious to see how Saberson deals with these builds. Um, I'm sort of inclined to make this uh, to make this tournament not a Saberson type of build. Um, if anything, I'll, maybe I'll make half my lineup Saberson sims and the others kind of hand build because when I hand build, that's when I can really hammer the ownership in. You know, um, so we'll we'll see how what I end up doing. But Dustin Johnson, I think, is um, is significantly better, a uh, better play, right, given ownership than, say, Spieth and Hideki, right? I have, I have Spieth at about 17%. I have Hideki at about 13%. I have just Dustin Johnson, almost the exact same as them, but significantly lower owned. So I, I, would, I would say Dustin Johnson would be the best of that group. So overall, what, what do I think of this range? So, so I, I don't think I would fade. Patrick Cantley, I think just because he's, he's just so much stronger for me than the others that I'd be inclined to eat that ownership. But when it, maybe I, what I won't do is eat the Xander ownership. Maybe what I won't do is, is eat the, uh, the Jordan Speed ownership. Maybe Cam Smith is kind of efficiently priced. So maybe I would take some of some Cam Smith, maybe. But Dustin Johnson would certainly be, you know, you say leverage adjusted and ownership adjusted. I would say that, that he makes the, you know, probably the second best 9K play. So I would say Cantlay and Johnson when you give it, when you factor in both ownership, leverage and things like that. I think those are the two best in that 9K. All right. Um, going to the 8K range is about, you know, 10, 15 guys here. Um, I have you know, four or five, I have like six guys in here that I like, and we're going to compare ownership to all of them. One of them I literally don't believe. Um, so first of all, the guy I have ranked the highest is Corey Connors uh, at straight, at straight 8K. Um, I, I have him over like fourth overall, and his ownership seems relatively tame at 11, 12%. So, so I do like that. The, the, the next guy I have is Shane Lowry, who I have ranked just below Corey Connors and probably owned a little bit more. I, I think that that's going to change. I mean, people like to play Corey Connors. So I think they're going to be somewhat equal, actually, as far as ownership. So I regard those plays as very similar um, as far as leverage and all that stuff. So Connors and Lowry, I like. I like. Then you go down a little bit, for me at least, to, to what he needed. And he's, uh, you know, I have him as a pretty, pretty good play, but he's 15%. So I consider it probably kind of an average overall play. The, the play here, and I have three other guys I want to talk about, but first, look, I want to, I want to, um, I want to pull up Louis Oosthausen. So currently I have him rated, you know, with all the different metrics, the exact same as, 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 as Joaquin Neiman, for example. And I don't know how this is possible, but I, I have right now Lewis Neushausen at 6% ownership. Um, that's got to be a mistake or it's got to change or whatever, because if you're going to give me a situation like that where you have two guys that, again, that look very similar on the board and one guy is like one and a half, you know, two and a half times less owned, I'm going to be pounding that. So Lewis Neushausen for me, you know, it looks like an incredible play. Um, and the other two guys in the 8K range I want to talk about is, is Will Zalatoris and Daniel Berger. Uh, I like both those guys as well. And 
and um, let's just get to all these guys, right? So we'll get to those guys as well. And I have them both about 10%, both pretty fair, but not certainly not as great of a leverage play as Lewis Neushausen. And, and, and again, this is all subject to change, ownership change. But what I could encourage everybody to do is, is either you can build now if you want, or you can wait until Wednesday and, 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 you know, pull up my, pull up my, uh, my sheets, see what the value, you know, sheets value score is rate them that way. And then just kind of just visualize and eyeball it relative to ownership. Um, and listen, if you're not a premium member and you don't have access to my stuff, I mean, whatever, I mean, do that, do that with your own projections. I mean, they're not going to be as tight as, 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 as mine, but the, the, the concept is the same. Right. If you get if you get two projections that are very similar and one guy is going to be even five percent more owned than another, you could just take a really just easy stands on the other ones, and especially in, in, on a slate like this. Um, so I guess to summarize, so, so in the eight K's, Connors, Neiman, but 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 I don't like the leverage. So 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 I would say Connors. Oosthausen. And then, so I have Berger right now at eight percent, and that would be quite, quite the, uh, quite the, uh, quite the comeuppance, right? Uh, all the people that just just pounded Berger every week when he was chalk, if they forget about him at eight uh, percent, that's probably a mistake. So, I would rank the guys: Connors, Louis, Berger. That's kind of overall. Now, I'll save you guys the trouble for asking me. Well, what about this? What about that? What about this? Um, if I don't bring it up, it's just I don't like it at all. So, I mean, I, not, I wouldn't get to Shambo, Woods, uh, Hatton. Okay. Um, uh, Homa is getting ownership. I'm seeing a lot of good good stuff about it, but I'm just, I'm just you know, can't play everybody. I'm just not getting to that. All right. Um, 7K, guys. I would have thought that I was going to get some more of them. But it's just not going to be the case, it looks like. Um, there, there are a couple I really, really like. But it's not like your typical 7Ks for me where you could pick like a 1,000 guys. I really only like a couple of them that much. Um, one of them is actually, uh, well, let's just talk, talk about it. First guy I have is Matt Fitzpatrick. I have him ranked third overall. And, and he is always a model darling. He always gets written up. He always looks good because he's a good golfer and he has good metrics. And, um, and uh, as a result, he's going to be owned. I mean, he's, I have him about 13% ownership. And, uh, makes sense. A guy I have who's a, a little bit, you know, who's worse, but boy, oh boy maybe half the ownership is, is a guy who's playing really, really sneaky at, at well right now. And that's Keegan Bradley. Uh, I have him rated overall as my second best sub eight K guy. And currently at a seven and a half percent ownership clip. I mean, I have him ranked seventh overall right now. These can all change or whatever, but, but, but um, that's a really, really strong play. And, and if you could see my, you know, my sheet here, there's even it's actually a pretty significant drop from those two guys down to the other seven Ks that I like. And I'll just rattle them off. You know, like I like Cam Young, he looks good. Tommy Fleetwood, he looks good. Sergio, he looks good. Seamus Power, uh, Tony Finau, Horschel, Penley. So all those guys look good, and they're all going to be somewhat, you know, pretty low owned. Um you know, like five, you know, some of them 5%, some of them 6%. Cam Young, it looks like he's going to get some ownership at 10%. Um, and then you got guys like Jason Day, Taylor Gooch, Norin, Siwoo Kim. Like all these guys are like decent 7K plays. But, wow, I mean, Fitzpatrick and Bradley stand out so much for me that I'm going to probably – take some shots on, on, on going seriously over weight on these two guys. Um, um, so that's, that's, that's where I'm at the seven K range, which is really surprising because normally, again, like you can see, you can see my sheets. I mean, normally the glut of seven K's, you get like, like 11 of them 
all within like whatever of each other. But for whatever reason, I because of price and 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 how they've been playing, I got Fitzpatrick and Bradley as kind of standouts. So uh, that's that. Now, I am going to be updating all of this. I mean, it is only Tuesday, um, so I am going to update some you know some more of this tomorrow. But that's where I am right now. And if I if I if I get to anything significant that makes a huge difference, I will I will, I will post a Discord. If or if not, maybe even do a a, a, a follow up video. So let's talk about the sub seven K range. Now I don't know if I'm going to have to get to this again. When you have so many good plays up in the 8Ks and 9Ks, whatever, and you have a couple of good 7Ks, you don't need to necessarily don't go down here, but but if something looks good, I'll certainly consider it. But nobody really rates in the top, you know, top 35 for me. Um, but I will bring up the one, two, three guys that I do like who sort of stand out among the others. Uh, one is Mito Pereira who I would imagine is going to be one of the higher owned seven K six K guys. If, if, if they play these guys at all, the other guy is Sebastian Munoz, who had a heartbreaker this past week. Um, but I don't expect a letdown or anything like that. I mean, he'll get up to this tournament. Obviously it's a major, I mean, you're not going to have anybody that has a, you know, Byron Nelson hangover, right. Going into the, going into this one. And then the other six uh, sub so seven k say the other sub seven k guy I have is Aaron Wise as as usual. I mean these guys, you know Mito, Aaron Wise, these guys always show up as as kind of good plays, and you know this week is is no exception. Um, okay, so this is probably longer than I usually go with, with these things, um, but I, I feel as though on this particular slate you really want to just kind of spend a little time you know, digging into the differences between some of these players. Let me do uh, this kind of game, uh, kind of solo, where I give my top play from each range, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, and then top guy to miss the cut and all that stuff. Anyway, so, so if I had to pick a guy to win the tournament, I would go back, I would say Rory, uh, Rory McIlroy to win the tournament. If I had to pick one guy under 10K to make the top five, it would be uh, Patrick Cantlay. If I had to pick one guy under 9K to make the top 10, it would be Corey Connors. If you, if I had to take one guy under 8K to make the top 20, um, I'll go a little off the board again. Instead of saying Matt Fitzpatrick, I will say Keegan Bradley. Like top 20, that would be really that would be a really good performance for him in uh, in, in a major. Uh, and then top guy under 7k to miss the cut. I think both those, I think all three of the guys I mentioned are pretty live to make the cut. So I will say, boy, between Pereira, Wise, and Munoz. Like they're both pretty volatile. They're all three that are pretty volatile, but I'll, I will go with uh, with Nito Pereira to make the cut. I think that Wise and, and Munoz might have more upside. I think Wise certainly has more upside, but but um, just to make the cut, I would say Pereira. And the next is gonna be the, the, the guy under 10K to miss the cut. And I'm gonna do what I always do and just kind of just pick the lowest 9K rated guy for me. And that is going to be Brooks Kepka. So Kepka, one who's the greatest at the majors relative to the rest of the tournaments, so I'm going to pick him to miss the cut. And then the other thing I want to just go over is, is my top guy over 10%, which is a fade. Like who's the who's the guy that is rated the you know the lowest for me given his ownership? And I have two guys. Um, one is Max Homa. Um, and the other one is Scotty Scheffler. So those would be my fades, I guess, Homa and Scheffler. Um, uh, not that either of them are that, that bad of a play, honestly, but, but just, you know, those are the, those are the lowest rated guys I have that are owned or more than 10%. 
unless you want to say Colin Morikawa is over 10. I have him at 9.8 right now. So I, and I, would, I don't definitely don't like him. I mean, I don't like him, but I think that he's overvalued and probably a fade. Um, so that's pretty much it. I will attempt to, um, I will attempt to update this. And I myself, I'm going to watch uh, Bobby, Kenny, and uh, Jordan's uh, preview as well, where they I hopefully highlight Saberson's uh, builds of this thing. But uh, let's go get the one million for first. Good luck, everybody. <laughs>